aim, weak, wimpy. Mr. Speaker, those words describe our Prime Minister's reaction to the cancellation of the Keystone XL pipeline. On no comfort whatsoever that you are indemnified by the government of Canada. That means that the taxpayer. The ongoing lockdowns have put 5,600 Manitoba businesses at risk of permanently disappearing, and many have already closed, impacting thousands of workers who had good, paying, stable jobs. These last three months, and, and frankly the last year, has been extremely difficult on my constituents. They deserve a federal government that has their back and secures vaccines for Canadians so we can get our economy back on track and return to our normal lives. However, this week, Manitoba will, will receive zero doses of the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine and all new vaccination appointments have been halted as a result. Despite this critical situation, the Prime Minister took his time in calling the CEO of Pfizer. Meanwhile, other world leaders were calling and securing vaccines for their countries and will receive their vaccine shipments while Canada is left behind. Canadians deserve a real plan to secure vaccines now. The Honourable Member for Rivière-du-Nord. You're on mute. <laughs> Okay. Et voilà. There you go. Mr. Speaker, I'm sorry. Mr. Speaker, the Governor General had to resign because of her abusive behavior. As far as we're concerned in Quebec, she shouldn't be replaced. Her position should be abolished. The Crown is an anti-democratic symbol of the monarchy and doesn't belong, has no place in a democratic society. The, the Prime Minister is in this position because of his lack of due diligence. The, Ms. Payette's problems are nothing new in terms of dealing with staff, and obviously the Merci beaucoup. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oral questions. Question oral, the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, last fall, Conservatives asked the Prime Minister what he was going to do to protect the thousands of jobs related to the Keystone XL pipeline. The Prime Minister's answer was that he called President Biden. Those workers deserved better than one phone call leading to pink slips. Why did the Prime Minister bet the jobs of thousands of Canadians on a single phone call to the President? Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, that's simply not the case. From the very beginning, we have been there to support, support oil and gas workers across the country, including in Alberta and Saskatchewan. That's why seven years ago, when I was uh, a mere leader of the third party in the House of Commons, I went down to Washington to advocate for the Keystone XL pipeline uh, to a room full of uh, American Democrats to talk about the interconnectedness of our, uh, our energy uh, uh, security, but also to advocate for more leadership on climate change. Over the past five years, we've demonstrated that investing in oil and gas and fighting climate change can go together. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. I'd like to thank the Prime Minister for confirming he's had no success with the U.S. relationship for seven years. The government's response since the Americans decided to kill Keystone has been complete surrender. Canadians are being told it was a campaign promise the Liberals didn't want to interfere with. The Liberals are now telling Canadians just to move on. Is this the kind of mail-it-in effort from this Prime Minister we're going to get when hundreds of thousands of Canadians are worried about their economic future? Yeah. Honourable Prime Minister. How quickly the Leader of the Opposition uh, forgets that the past four years were characterized by this government consistently standing up for Canadians right across the country, whether it be uh, protecting supply management, whether it be protecting the cultural exemption, whether it be protecting our steel and, and uh, aluminum workers, whether it's moving forward on uh, defending Canadian interests against the previous administration or working hand in hand on both fighting climate change and creating new jobs. Uh, jobs with this current administration, we will stay focused on sticking up for Canadians every step of the way. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Well, in just a few days, he's already lost thousands of jobs in both Canada and the U.S. from inaction, Mr. Speaker. We also know on vaccines, the government was talking to Pfizer last fall about logistics. They've known for months there were going to be problems with production. They didn't plan for it. This week, Mr. Speaker, there'll be no deliveries of the Pfizer vaccine. Next week, 
Our order has been cut by 86 percent, more than any other country. Why are Canadians always paying for this Prime Minister's failure to act quickly? Mr. Speaker, from the very beginning, uh, we knew that there would be challenges with the global supply chains around uh, vaccines as they were developed, which is why we set out and succeeded in signing more contracts with more different countries, uh, companies for more doses per Canadian than in any other country in the world. Uh, we know that momentary delays are happening on Pfizer, but we will be receiving hundreds of thousands of doses uh, later in February, and we are still on track to vaccinating over 3 million Canadians by the end of Q1 and everyone who wants it by September. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Monsieur le Président, 18%. Mr. Speaker, 18% of vaccine deliveries have been cut in Canada. This week, no vaccine delivery. No distribution plan. Delays in delivery. Canadians are worried. The Prime Minister must act now. When will this Liberal government take action to increase vaccine availability? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, we are continuing to communicate with all the vaccine companies because we have signed more contracts with more vaccine companies for more vaccine doses than any other country. We are disappointed in the delays with Pfizer. but. We are continuing to receive Moderna deliveries and we are continuing to work with other companies to bring vaccines to Canada more quickly. I can assure Canadians that we will continue to hit our objective of getting 3 million or more Canadians vaccinated by the end of March. The dose, Monsieur le Président. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. More doses, Mr. Speaker. Well, there will be zero doses next week, during the middle of a pandemic. There is a real problem in vaccine availability in Canada. Long-term care and seniors residences are not receiving vaccines. This is a crucial juncture for all Canadians. And yet this week, zero vaccines, Mr. Speaker. Why are we always behind when it comes to vaccines and other health measures during this pandemic? The Right Honourable Prime Minister, I understand the Honourable Leader of the Opposition's concern with scoring political points, but we must not deliberately mislead Canadians. We will continue to receive Moderna doses. Yes, there is a temporary interruption in Pfizer deliveries, but we will continue to work closely with the company to ensure that we receive more doses in a few weeks when their factory is once again producing. We will be able to vaccinate everyone by September. We will be able to meet our end of March goal. The Honourable Member for Belleuil Chambly. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I am pleased to hear the Prime Minister say that we must not mislead people. Perhaps he should follow his own advice. We learned in La Presse that Quebec is going to have to delay vaccination of people's parents and grandparents because there are delays in the Pfizer deliveries. And that comes on top of the delays already announced in mid-January. And the amount was already too low. I would like to hear from the Prime Minister himself. How many vaccines will he be receiving from Pfizer this week? The Right Honourable Prime Minister, as we told the provinces a few weeks ago, there is an interruption in Pfizer's deliveries because Pfizer is retooling its Belgian factory. We will receive hundreds of thousands of doses in a few weeks. There is an interruption right now, which is why it's a good thing that we negotiated agreements with several companies, because we will continue receiving doses from Moderna and we will continue to work with Pfizer and others to deliver the maximum amount of doses as quickly as possible. The Honourable Member for Belay Chambly, well, I see that the answer is zero vaccines from Pfizer delivered, Mr. Speaker. I'd like the Prime Minister to tell seniors in Quebec that this interruption is a good thing. Now, when it comes to improving 
the taxation system for businesses. And when it comes to price fixing of drugs in Canada, there was there was some remarkable information heard at the committee about this. Is the Prime Minister concerned that Pfizer is requesting tax advantages in Canada at the same time as it's not delivering vaccines? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the good news is that we negotiated with various different companies. Just in case there was an interruption like this one, that's the good news. We had a strong negotiating plan. Once again, we see that the leader of the bloc is grazing a conspiracy theory attitude with the different issues that he's raising. We have a plan to vaccinate everyone by September, and we will deliver on that. The Honourable Member for Burnaby South. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We have lost more than 19,000 people to COVID-19. That includes frontline workers and seniors. Families are mourning. Why doesn't this Prime Minister take action? Why doesn't this Prime Minister make sure that everyone gets vaccinated? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the leader of the NDP is the one who's talking about elections. We are focused on vaccinating Canadians. That is why we're working closely with provinces as well to protect seniors, to work on standards for long-term care. We are working with the Red Cross and the Canadian Armed Forces to protect seniors. We will continue to focus on what Canadians want, which is to deliver the help that Canadians need. We have promised to be there for everyone, just as long as that's necessary. And that is what we are going to do. Member for Burnaby South. Mr. Speaker, we have lost over 19,000 Canadians to COVID-19. Now that's a staggering number, but it's not just a number. These are real people. People like Yassine Dabe, a 19-year-old Syrian refugee who fled war but ended up losing his life to COVID-19 while working in a long-term care centre, a for-profit long-term care centre. Now, why is this Prime Minister spending time preparing for an election when he should be spending all of his time protecting Canadians by making sure everyone has access to a vaccine? Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, we made a promise to Canadians that we would have their backs whatever it took, as long as it takes to get through this pandemic. And that is what we are focused on. I'll allow the leader of the uh, NDP to talk about elections all he wants. Our focus is on delivering for Canadians and supporting Canadians through the tragedies and the incredible heroics we're seeing on display right across the country from our frontline workers. There are far too many tragedies, but we know that Canadians are continuing to be there for each other, and this government will continue to be there for them. Honourable Member for Calgary, Nose Hill. Um, I'd like to check the Prime Minister's math, Mr. Speaker. He said every adult would be vaccinated by September, which is 32 weeks away, and all the leading COVID-19 vaccines require two doses. There are approximately 30 million adults in Canada, and under 2% have received a single dose so far. This means Canada, on average, needs to be administering roughly 2 million doses per week to meet this goal. This week's total is zero. How the hell did this happen, and what are the Liberals doing to fix it? I, I know everyone's been away for a while, and the parliamentary language is something that uh, we tend to forget, so I just want to remind everyone that certain words do um, rank as unparliamentary. I, and I know it was a slip-up, so I don't, it wasn't anything planned. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, there is no question that we share the urgency of Canadians to obtain vaccines as soon as possible. With more than 1.1 million vaccines distributed across this country to date, we are on track to have 3 million Canadians vaccinated by the end of March, and all Canadians who wish to be vaccinated will have access to a vaccine before the end of September 2021. Mr. Speaker, 
We are on track with our strategy. This is a temporary interruption, and we will make sure we deliver for Canadians because nothing is more important. Thank you, Mr. The Honourable Member for Calgary knows Hill. I'd like to take a moment to congratulate Romania, Poland, Italy, Spain, the Czech Republic, France and other countries for receiving doses from Pfizer this week and to their governments who negotiated more favourable terms with drug companies than Canada's procurement minister. And we know why the procurement minister won't release the details of these contracts and it's because she executed a terrible deal. What are the Liberals doing to fix their deadly screw-ups and get us vaccines. The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, on the contrary, we secured under seven APAs the largest number of doses per capita of any country in the world. We also made sure not to put all our eggs in one basket so that in case there are interruptions in the supply chain, we will be able to draw on other companies' deliveries. So to that end, we will be receiving over 300,000 doses from both Pfizer and Moderna next week alone. We will have 6 million doses in this country before the end of the March before the end of March, and then going on through the rest of the year, we will see millions and millions of more vaccines. The Honourable Member for Calgary knows Hill. Well, I would argue that this week Canada is receiving the lowest per capita amount of vaccines because we're receiving zero. Zero is zero. It's not something that's there. I don't know why the procurement minister doesn't understand that. We don't have the same favourable terms as other countries do, and that is her fault. It's the prime minister's fault. So just not having a plan isn't going to cut it. What is this government going to do to get us vaccines now? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, it is inaccurate to say that we do not have a plan. On the contrary, we have secured more vaccines per, per capita than any other country in the world. We will see 20 million vaccines coming in from Pfizer and Moderna alone in Q2, and we will see 70 million vaccines coming in.